Why are you wearing my shirt? Uh, why are you wearing my shirt? Good morning, everybody. We're heading out to the field again. Storm wasn't too bad. We might have gotten 1500s to two tenths around the farm up north. Could have been as much as a third of an inch up north. I don't know about much hail, but I think the crops, because there wasn't a lot, are probably about ready to harvest again. So we're gonna head over and start uh, pulling those peas off the ground. See how far we get. Not a lot left of good peas. And then uh, and then we're into the hailed stuff. So it's gonna be a lot of scraping then. So we'll see how it goes. I've been thinking about it. And I understand there's reasons why they don't. But wouldn't that be cool if they could design a combine where the cab sat over the header, or at least right up in front of it. I mean, as of right now, I've got great visibility. I'm not saying it's bad, and I guess sitting back, you don't have to pan as far with your head because your back and your peripheral vision is there, but if I was up over the header, man, I'd be able to spot rocks a lot easier. And it'd be really fun to be able to watch the crop come in just looking straight down at the cutter bar. But I know in corn country that won't work so good, so gotta make one combine fit everything. All right, let's do a quick crop check. Let's see if we're getting all the peas out of those pods. So this is what I just went through. I can see it's definitely more straw. The rotor is not chopping all this up, which means there's some moisture in it. So what I'm looking for is pods that have peas in them still. It's hard to judge because there's peas on the ground on the stuff that we didn't harvest from the rain. So this stuff is, I feel a little bit of moisture in it still, just a little bit of moisture. And when these pods dry, I might open up and drop peas on the ground. And that's just the trouble with peas is you gotta get them harvested as soon as they're ready. Otherwise, they'll start to shell and some of them have already. I don't see any pods in any of the straw that has peas left in them. So I think we're good to go. Let's keep rolling. Ooh, eh, uh, hmm. Oh, I'm going back at the shop, not good. I swapped leg arms, go eat lunch, he ran it, and out of nowhere, all of a sudden, large vibration, alarms go off, straw chopper alarm says, it's not running. We sat and looked at and looked at it, and turned everything and turned and looked at it, looked at it, and turned everything and inspected and finally determined that there must be bearings going out in the straw chopper somewhere up on this side. So, yeah, this vibrates so aggressively that it shakes the belts off when it's running. You can't hear the bearings click or it's not hard to turn when you try to turn the straw chopper by hand, but something clearly is not good. Either the straw chopper is bent from rocks, which is weird because you didn't have a rock go through when it happened, or the bearings are shot, but we gotta start pulling stuff apart to investigate. So, here we go. All right, I just got back and get the parts. My arms wasn't here, so I just finished the job for him. Oh, hey, there he is. Oh, wow, that was hey, so easy, it just it. slid right off. Oh, you can see it. Yeah, it's a uh, shot. <laughs> it's shot. You got to see my tool I made. You're gonna laugh. It worked really good though. Don't judge me. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> I call it my, my rebar chisel thing okay it was a really good idea though it, it worked it works all right let's see if it's the right one uh, are you? yeah that is definitely not the right one what's going on here this one's a lot of bigger opening see that so this one's got a keyway or no that's that's the way it's oh, i think it's, it's just an updated one hopefully it's updated because they're closed now so i have to do a little bit of digging this is the right bearing. It's just the upgraded bearing. I remember, I think at the end of the 230 series into the 240 series, that's the 8240s, 7240s, all that area. They went to a larger bearing on the straw chopper. This has the original smaller bearing. So we're just gotta modify because the bolts went in the top on this one. And on this one, they go in the back from behind and we don't have the right length bolts because it's a different. So 
we're gonna take the old boats and cut them down to size. <laughs> So, I see you putting the nut back on it before you cut it down. Why are you wearing my shirt? Uh, why are you wearing my shirt? I climbed in the combine when Dad plugged it. I dumped the trucks while you filled it. Oh. So we're even, right? Okay. I'm putting the nut back on because when I cut them down, I want to make sure that I can clean the threads out. Because otherwise, trying to stud a, start a nut on the bolt that you cut can be challenging. So, I will show you real quick. Hold on. Okay, there is the difference that I'm trying to cut. A little bit shorter, but the nut goes on fairly yeah, yeah, there, there we go, perfect. Yeah, see, it's easier to run a net off because it already has threads and it'll help mold the mangled threads to match the existing threads, so then it'll thread it out. Make sense? And then, or you can get a thread chaser, but, or is that a die? Die, thread chaser, die. Well, thread chaser. Thread chaser, that's fine. <laughs> The reason we're doing this is because I didn't know that the new bearing was different, so I didn't ask for the new bolts that would bolt the new bearing up. So when we got back, the parts store is already closed, can't go back to get the right bolts. We have bolts that'll work, they're just too long, so that's why we're cutting them hey, down. Nick, I don't know if you should be wearing that shirt the employee of the month. Why not? Uh, you just explained to me that you basically screwed up, so I deserve the shirt. I wasn't driving the combine when it broke. You can, you can wear the shirt. I was eating potato chips. I think we got it. So he's gonna pull it forward. He's gonna hit the go switch and we're gonna see if it turns over like it should. It doesn't shake itself apart. The bearing on the other side looked good. We spun it, spun it, spun it, spun all the bearings that were there. They all seem fine, so I guess we'll just keep an eye on them. If they start to vibrate, change them out too. He's a little dirty. When it was raining, I was uh, splashing mud all over them, but I'm not gonna wash them now, it's going right back to the field. Do that in a little bit. All right, here we go. Sensor did get hit. Flag arm just took it out and the end of it is banged up. So it's saying that the speed's slow because this sensor is no good. So we gotta get a new one. Somehow when it shuttered, when the bearing went out, it clipped this, which was good because then the combine quit running because it thought the straw chopper was plugged and not turning, which if it would have said it was kept turning, we would have kept running it. That worn out bearing would have kept getting worse and would have probably started a fire. So we lost a sensor, but possibly saved a combine in a field. But Big Brute didn't get a fight of fire, so he'll live another day, I guess. Well, we finished up the acres that uh, were salvageable of the peas that didn't get hail. Now I'm in the stuff that did get hail, and we're trying to decide where do we where do we call it quits and draw the line. Uh, I'm, I'm in something right now and I've got zero bushels coming in. So as of right now, I'm losing money running this combine across this. 
So we'll probably jump over There's one more field that might be okay, might have 40 to 80 acres of crop on it. And then from then on, it's gonna be just basically playing this game of driving around the heavily hailed pea ground and then just deciding, is it good? Do we move on to the next one? All right, or should we just cut it? Because right now, as you can see, yeah, nothing. So I want to show you guys something real quick. See this screen right here? Looks like a normal map, doesn't it? Well, there's something cool going on here. If you zoom in, you can see there's a white arrow. That white arrow is me. And up here is my dad. And this is everything that he's harvested, and that's what I've harvested. Because technically right now, our combines are sharing data through this modem right here. So we're AccuSync enabled. It's a new system from Case IH with the AFS Connect portal. So all this data between the two combines is being shared between the combines and it's being uploaded to the cloud where I can access it through my app or the portal on a web browser. So I can see where he's harvested, where I've harvested. I can see the moisture, the yield, and then we can share other data like all the field information. So when I go up to a field, I start a new job, I select the farm, the unit, the type of crop, I hit go, it starts it, his combine, he searches, it pops up and says, hey, would you like to join the job that Nick created? He joins it. Now he has all the same information in his combine and it's all being logged correctly. So in this field, we have a weed problem. I don't know what happened, but I might have missed spraying this field when I was spraying down the sulfedra zone. So it's a mess. <laughs> but under those weeds is actually some decent peas. But up on the hilltop up here where leg arms is and bee spine, he's only got like three bushels an acre because that's where the hail storm went through. This field's like a mile long or so, almost, and the hailstorm went through the middle of it. So yeah, it's kind of hit and miss. So they're just going in circles, trying to find whatever piece they can, and then we'll call it and move to the next one. We've been chowing through these pea acres, and uh, this is the, the hailed stuff right here. There's literally zero bushels an acre in that. Uh, we're probably going to abandon about 300 acres in this area of yellow peas. Uh, it's just not even worth dragging the header through. Uh, we're, we've been, we've been kind of calling it about three bushels of an acre. Anything below that's just hardly paying for itself. But you're just you're beating the combines up, running rocks through them. That it's one rock worth of damage can take a hundred acres of three bushel we peas and throw it out the window because the damage is that you got to pay to fix the combine. So it's a tough call, but you just got to do what you got to do. We're moving on to the next one though. We'll see what that one's like. dad's reel broke he just run it but it's one bad it's flipping around it's uh doesn't have the mechanism to make it go straight he's just doing some test cuts in this area to see if uh, this is worth cutting uh beast buying is down on the other end we'll check that out too i think the hail went right through this this field's a mile long i don't know good 500 yards wide and i think the whole thing Stripped. I was hoping to get a little more in this area, but it's not looking promising. I think it's the shells are just they're all opened up, so peas are gone. So what's gonna happen is we'll we have the adjuster who's way behind because there's so many claims right now in the area. He's gonna come out in about a week and then we'll drive him around the whole farm and show him all these acres and the areas that we did harvest some peas off, we left test strips or check strips or inspection strips, adjustment strips. Uh, that then he can walk around and do plant counts, pod counts, count the peas on the ground and get an idea of what was in that field strategically and then he'll be able to do an account for the whole field and we'll pay out accordingly. Like this field, if that's all worthless out there for that, you know, 150, 200 acres right there. Well, he has a whole field to check and he'll go from end to end to end and they'll know that the whole thing got hailed. So that's how that works. And then they'll come up with an estimate and if it meets our 50 bucks an acre that we took out on it, which isn't a lot, 
we'll get paid $50 an acre. If it's like 80% of that, then we get paid 80% of $50 an acre, which is what, $40 an acre? So, looks like there's pods though. I'm looking at it, I see pods on those plants, but I think they're just shelled out. There's something in this field right here. Oh, look at him go. Look at him go. That's a big skunk. Look at that stinky skunk. Oh, he does not like me. Well, guys, that's it. We called it. Pea harvest 2021 is officially over. Now we gotta wait for spring wheat to be ready, and we're thinking probably a week and a half. So we got some time to tune things, fix things. Five finger from May West on the reel worked really good. Like that a lot. I'm gonna check out those skid plates on the bottom of the headers. We've been dragging headers for like 2,000 acres, so we'll see what that looks like in a second. I left some of the original MacDons in there too, so I can compare the two. But we were just trying to cut everything we could possibly find, and we finally just decided if you're not paying for the operation of the combine to drive over the field, why be in it? And then later I started cutting trees down. What have we come to? This is just out of control.